Good evening. It's six o'clock on Monday, the 7th of August, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, bringing you the day's national top stories translated into English six days a week. The Minister of Defence, Mimi Corvelli, today discussed the difficulties in coping with the fire situation in the country due to the hot weather and drought. During a press conference, the Minister of Defence gave information on the missions undertaken in different regions of the country, as well as the engagement of the armed forces. The Minister praised the cooperation between the Ministry of Defence, the armed forces and the civil emergency services. The current climatic conditions are beyond the norm for Albania, with very high temperatures and non-existent rainfalls. This has put the country in a very difficult situation. One third of all armed forces have been engaged to extinguish the fires. Helicopters from the armed forces have been directly assisting in putting out the fires. I emphasize that these tasks are beyond their commitment. The situation is difficult not only in Albania, but all over Europe. The government has provided their maximum commitment to solving this situation. The Prime Minister is following all the operations we have undertaken. Our soldiers have carried out 102 missions in help of the community in 12 regions in only a month. There have been 2,750 soldiers committed to these missions or one third of all the armed forces. 320 military vehicles have been used in the operations, declared the Minister of Defence, praising the cooperation between state structures. The Minister also thanked neighbouring countries for providing help to Albania during this difficult situation. We have received support from our neighbours, Italian and Greek aircraft have joined our missions, said the Minister. A medal for distinguished service was accorded to a soldier of the armed forces who was injured during a mission for extinguishing a fire in the Shenjerej area. At the end, the Minister of Defence issued an appeal to citizens. I call on all citizens to ensure their contributions to the situation are positive. I call on them not to provoke the situation. The missions have cost more than 30 million lek of taxpayers' money. You should be careful, especially when throwing cigarette butts. We must conserve the trees and pastures, said the minister. The head of the emergency services has also considered the situation to be difficult and thanked the readiness of both the armed forces and of the Viva company for their help with helicopters. The head of the emergency services also praised straight state structures, which according to him, have been in complete readiness to cope with the situation. The Civil Emergency Service has reported nine new fires in the past 24 hours. Affected areas include Dibur, Vlor, Elbasan, Berat, Duras and Tiran. The firefighting teams, assisted by firefighting vehicles, military forces and some helicopters, have all been battling the blazes. An air mission was undertaken in the Dibur area to extinguish the flames, which burned about 20 hectares of pine trees. The operations to extinguish blazes in the Dukat village near the National Park of Logara have been successful. All the fires have now been extinguished, though not without consequence, as 60 hectares of land has been burned. The two helicopters from Greece have come to aid in the Vlora area, where a considerable surface of bushes were burned. Fire erupted in a wooden surface at Dushku Lake in Elbasan. The firefighting service found it difficult to intervene because of the rugged terrain, and the fire has not yet been extinguished. A considerable surface of bushes and pines has already been burned. According to the Civil Emergency Service, a fire in Srapar has also burned a significant area of bushes and pines. 200 olive trees were burned in the Doris area. Another fire erupted near Daiti Mountain in a surface of bushes and pines. Firefighting teams have been sent and the operation to extinguish the flames there continues. The hot weather and drought have favoured the spread of fire. The weather forecast reported that the temperatures will be high again tomorrow. Expected temperatures in the mountainous areas range from 19 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. In the lowlands, 20 up to 41 degrees Celsius. And in the coastal area, 22 degrees to, 20, to 38 degrees Celsius. The persisting hot weather ensures the danger of fire remains. And as such, the civil emergency specialists are keeping the situation under constant monitoring across the country. Should you notice any signs of fire, do ensure you contact the emergency phone numbers as per the request of the Civil Emergency Service. The death toll caused by the explosion, which occurred several days ago at a restaurant in Velopoi, has now risen to two. The explosion caused by gas leaking from a tank with a capacity of 1,000 litres has caused the, caused the death of the owner of the restaurant and now also his son. 
The owner of the restaurant died last week with burns covering more than 95% of his body while his 33-year-old son passed away today in a hospital in Turkey. He was transferred in order to receive more specialised treatment but could not survive the severe wounds to his body caused by the burns. It was learned that the son of the restaurant entered the blaze uh, to, in an attempt to save his father but instead suffered his own serious injuries. Both men were transported by helicopter to the Burns Department of Tirana Hospital. Following the death of his father, the son was transferred to Turkey after an appeal issued by his sister for better treatment, but still he could not survive the critical injuries. Two other people were injured in the explosion on July 28, but fortunately their injuries are not considered life-threatening. Tirana's City Hall continues with its investments in the capital's kindergartens. Today, the Mayor visited the reconstructed Kindergarten 17, belonging to Administrative Unit Number 7. City Hall has completed the reconstruction of the kindergarten, which will welcome around 120 children. The Mayor, accompanied by the Socialist MP Vasilika Husli and the General Director of Prisons, inspected the completion of the work at the kindergarten. This is a kindergarten which has gone through a lot in order to be as it is today. Many people see the beautiful result, but they do not know the problems we have encountered to reach this point. However, the good outcome is what truly matters, declared the mayor. Applying a pilot project, for the first time the city hall involves youth who are currently imprisoned in the reconstruction of the kindergarten. The young people were given the opportunity to create furniture for the kindergarten in a project aimed at rehabilitating young offenders. The way this pilot project has been applied is fantastic, announced the mayor. The mayor also announced that this pilot project will be applied to the rehabilitation programs of other kindergartens as well. The City Hall has taken measures to ensure that kindergartens are also open during August to receive children. The registration process for kindergartens will start by September 1. The Minister of Education has announced the opening of the application process in order to select the new director of the Albanology Study Centre. The former director of the centre resigned last year and since that time the position has been vacant. In fact, since the realisation of the reform on higher education, Prime Minister Eddie Rama has left the actual function of this institution rather unclear. The Albanology Study Centre was founded in 2007 by former Prime Minister Sali Berisha with the aim of realising scientific research. In 2016, the Prime Minister issued some accusations against the centre saying that their work has only served to destruction. Meanwhile, the decision by the Minister of Education to begin the race to select the new director has been rejected by some historians and researchers who have given their contribution to the Centre of Albanian Studies for many years. Professor Palum Bjufi considers it to be an effort to have political control over the centre of studies. The professor says that this is the time the provisional ministers leave as their duty has already finished. No candidates have been posed for the position as yet, with the professor saying that those who have been in the political positions are the ones expected to run for the title. The world's most popular magazines are dedicating more and more of their pages to informing their reader base about Albania, especially about the currently transforming Tirana. The prestigious Italian magazine Vanity Fair has written an article about the changes the Albanian capital is undergoing. The magazine highlighted the work done by Mayor Erion Veliai, considering him to be a very dynamic person. Assessing Tirana as the engine of change that is contagious to the rest of the country, Vanity Fair highlighted the over 100 open construction sites in the city centre, the several recently inaugurated playgrounds and the new green areas that have been added to the city. Journalist Marta Gelma invites tourists not to miss the opportunity to visit our interesting city, with top attractions mentioned including Skanderberg Square, the transformation of the new bazaar and the Bunkart Museums. The article also highlights the beautiful Albanian beaches, putting emphasis on Porto Palermo, a coastal area only a few kilometres away from Himara. According to Vanity Fair, the coastline connecting Vlora and Saranda is the best in the Mediterranean, and the islands of Ksamil are the islands of dreams. Albanian beaches are as beautiful as Greek beaches, writes Vanity Fair, which also praises the immensely warm hospitality of Albanian people. The article also mentions Berat, Girokastra and Butrint, cities that are World Heritage Protected UNESCO sites as places worthy of being visited. 
Vanity Fair concludes its article by commenting on Albania's delicious food. The traditional food attracts attention of foreigners and, according to the Italian magazine, tasting it once is just not enough. That's all for our English edition this evening. My name is Alexandra. Please join me again Monday through Saturday at 6pm for your local news in English. On behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.